We've got a new filming location for today because it's, what time is it? 10.19 at night when I'm filming this video and it's dark out and I didn't feel like figuring out my ridiculous lighting setup that I usually have in my videos that I film at night. Also, me and Sean just got finished watching the Amazing Race finale so my heart pumping from all that adrenaline. It was great. I'm not going to ruin it. If you haven't seen it, you should go watch it. Prime TV, some really, really good TV. I've been watching the Amazing Race since I was like, I don't even know, since the very beginning with my family. Anyways, this video is not about that. Hello, YouTube. So it is the end of another month, which means that today's video is a book of the month video, and this month I have been reading Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. If you're new here, hello, my name is Tori Cyclic. I make new videos every Sunday for Cyclic Sunday with other videos throughout the week. If you like what you see, like this video down below and subscribe while you're down there as well. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram in the description at TSS6295. Now let's get into the video. So if you have not watched my most recent video from last Sunday, I talked about my opinions about Good Omens the TV show. Good Omens the TV show is based off of this book by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett, which I had heard of many, many years ago and then never read. And then when I heard the TV show was becoming a thing because it had David Tennant in it, that was why I watched it, but then I just still enjoyed it a lot anyway. And then as soon as I finished watching the show, I was like, I am going to go read Good Omens. I really, really enjoyed it. The show made me want to read the book and the book is hilarious just in the same kind of way that the show is because the show was written by Neil Gaiman who is one of the authors of the book so you had like his voice throughout the entire thing which I really loved and it helped to make the book enjoyable to read. I haven't read a fiction book in a while and it was really good to get back into it with this book in particular. Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett both wrote this book together. Terry Pratchett died I don't remember exactly when so when uh, the show was becoming a thing it's been in process for a very very long time and then finally came to fruition in 2019 Neil Gaiman wanted to make it a show for a very long time. They were trying to figure out many, many ways to do it and how they could translate this book that has a lot to it into a TV series. So in that regard, there are exact scenes from the book in the TV show, which I really liked about it because sometimes with book to film and TV adaptations, they change a lot of things. Case in point, Harry Potter, Twilight, Hunger Games, John Green's books, any book to TV adaptation, they change a lot of things because it's not usually the person who wrote the book writing for the TV or film adaptation. But with this, because it was Neil Gaiman writing it, he literally said, okay, I can do whatever I want with this. I'm going to take these scenes, like whatever he decided to do with writing it, he took exact scenes from the book and put it in the into the TV show. So the book has a very interesting way of telling the story through Agnes Nutter, who is um, the nice and accurate prophecies of Agnes Nutter, which one of the characters in the book that the TV show doesn't have because it feels like you're reading the book from a researcher's point of view who's going like, here's Agnes Nutter's book. This is the information I'm taking from it. Here are how these characters are interpreting it. And now here we go, here's this plot device and everything that we have in here. Whereas with the show, you have the narrator of God, played by Frances McDormand, who you don't see at all, it's just a speaking voice throughout the entire thing. She like has the voice from the book because she's narrating everything from the book, but then it becomes like, oh, this is God telling you what happened to Aziraphale, Crowley, Gabriel, Adam, the dog, everything in the book, and it makes it a different kind of perspective. So you get two different ways of telling the story from the book and from the movie, and I think they're both really well done. On these first few pages of the book, it has a character breakdown. The people of the supernatural beings, humans, everybody else who's in there, like all the different characters. So because there's a lot of people in this book, it's really helpful to keep track of it. So there's definitely times where I was reading the book, I was like, okay, I don't remember exactly who this person is. Let me just flip back to this little directory in the beginning to be like, okay, this is how they fit into the story and then go back into it and helps to really understand the book even more. Within the book as well, you get a little bit more backstory on all the characters that the show probably had to cut out, which I really love because then you get like more perspective on the characters and their different parts of their journey throughout the entire story and how it gets to the point of Armageddon that it gets to in the show because there's only six episodes of the show currently. I don't know if they're doing a second season. So it kind of gets to that point in the last episode and you have to go, okay, this is where the book took in like 300 pages and there was a lot more backstory in some of the characters but you get a lot more with Aziraphale, a lot more with Crowley, a lot more specifically with Anathema Device and um, the Pulsifer, Newt Pulsifer. There are some footnotes at the bottom of some of the pages of the book which is really good because one, it lends a lot to the witty humor that Neil Gaiman brings into the book and gives you his kind of interpretation of some of the things that are said that are very like British colloquialisms and things that need to kind of be cleared up to like an American audience slash like just to anybody who's reading the book as well just to make it like very specific and then it also shows like his humor 
his sardonic way of talking, his wittiness with everything that he's talking about. I also really enjoyed thinking about how the book separated things into chapters and like story timelines that the show did differently because obviously the show has to break it into hour long episodes whereas the book has as much time as they want to have to be like okay we can make this chapter here be like 10 pages long or it can be 200 pages long and there's a lot more time for them to expand on the characters in those specific chapters. Going back to it afterwards with the show, Neil Gaiman was able to be like, okay, I have all this information here, now I can cut it down into this little bit and have that be this part of an episode. So for me, reading it from that kind of perspective of watching the show before reading the book and then going into the book, it was easier for me to be like, okay, this is where this episode ended and this one started. Okay, now I know where this character is because of what I read before, what I'm reading, what I saw. One of the things that I really loved about reading Good Omens in public in particular was that so many people commented on it and were like, oh my god, I love that book. Is it your first time reading it? Oh, did you know there's a show about it? And I was like, yeah, I watched the show. It made me want to read the book. They were like, oh man, it's such a good book. You're going to love it, especially if you've seen the show. So there's a huge cult following behind Good Omens. They talk a little bit about it in the foreword as well, that people came up to Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett with their copies of the book that were like completely destroyed and used because they'd read it so many times and given it to so many different people. So it's a very well-loved book, which I really appreciate about it, especially because reading about all their journey that it took to get to become a TV show, it took so many years for it to become like any kind of film-based thing that Neil Gaiman put so much love and hard work into after Terry Pratchett died specifically as well. It has so much love in it, which is a really good thing. It reminds me a lot of Harry Potter that there's like so much love behind the books and when the movies came out it became even more of a phenomenon that just like people really appreciate it and want to see it continue. So that's all I have for you guys today for my book of the month. If you have read Good Omens, let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. In addition, if you've also watched the TV show, let me know what you think about it in the comments down below as well. If there's anything you would like to see in particular on my channel, let me know about that in the comments down below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching DFTBA and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!